It's three o'clock in the morning. The place is Twinbrook, West Belfast, the home of Bobby Sands. In the last hour, the news has filtered through to this community that Bobby Sands has died after 66 days of hunger strike. And in scenes reminiscent of the early days of internment, bin lids have been bashed, car horns have been sounded to alert this community to the fact that Bobby Sands has died. And the Northern Ireland office in the last hour has issued a terse one-line statement. Mr. Robert Sands, a prisoner in the Mays prison, died today at 1.17. He took his own life by refusing food and medical intervention for 66 days. Not the Northern Ireland office has also issued a statement on behalf of Humphrey Atkins, the Northern Ireland Secretary of State. He says, I regret this needless and pointless death. Too many have died by violence in Northern Ireland. In this case, it was self-inflicted. But to others, the Mays had claimed a martyr, a Republican martyr. In the early hours of this morning, as news broke from the prison, West Belfast was awakened by a tribal Republican ritual. But despite that Republican call, most people stayed in bed while groups of teenagers built barricades in the streets. It was to be a night of occasional and indeed ritual violence, another night of hijacking, rioting and burning. But as dawn broke in Belfast, there was general relief that Sands' death had not sparked off a more violent reaction. In the more Republican districts of Belfast, black flags told their own story. But this picture wasn't typical. Apart from continued sporadic writing, there was little disruption of normal living. But how might feeling develop? Father Des Wilson, priest and community worker. Well, I can see things developing in this way that I would be very surprised if this doesn't mark the beginning of the end of English rule in Ireland. Um, the people were never, I think, as quietly angry. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. And vast numbers of people who never would have come out in any demonstration or have been out on the streets. People who always fought shy of all kinds of political demonstrations were so angry uh, at what the English government did on us and on my neighbours, that they came out in the streets in vast numbers and let nobody, let nobody underestimate the effectiveness of that. But isn't the reality that uh, while there's black flags here in Ballymurphy, throughout most of West Belfast, we're not seeing people coming out in the streets, there isn't this open sympathy with Bobby Sands? Well, we'll see, we'll see what happens. As far as I'm concerned, there'll be a black flag out, out of my house, certainly. Uh, we'll see, I think, a lot of people who wouldn't have been involved before. I have been living here now for the last, over the, all this period, and I think I can assess the mood of the people reasonably well. And uh, I know that the people are grimly determined that the English have played their last trick on us, and I think the, the people in the rest of Ireland should join us in making sure that that is so. Can you see a resolution of this yes, issue? Yes, I can. The English must get out. That they must get out and they must be put out by any means that, that we can muster. But in the immediate future, the hunger strike, the resolution the of the hunger strike. In the immediate strike. future, the English government has it within its power and the Irish government has it within its power to force them uh, to resolve this by giving the prisoners their, their demands. Of course, why shouldn't they? Why not? It's not worth any lives and the English will have to get out anyway. But isn't, aren't we in the middle of a huge provisional propaganda campaign well, here? Pot with that. What Dickens difference about that? This nonsense about, about provisional campaigns of, of, of propaganda. Sure, aren't we in the middle of a vicious British propaganda campaign? And nobody says anything about that. This is nonsense. Look, the people around here, if they're going to support the provisionals, they'll decide to do that. And they'll not be told by anybody who, who they, 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 they would support. And if the provisionals were to go political, without being military, tomorrow, vast numbers of people would support them. Of course they would. Today, on the loyalist Shankill Road, the mood was quiet, almost unconcerned. 
The UDA had appealed for calm, and it was a scene far removed from those forebodings of civil war. But feelings about Bobby Sands were clear. Well, I don't like to see anybody down, but it was his own choice for to do so. Like after all, he was, he's in there for a criminal offence, and it's up to himself, you know. Do you think the hunger strikers should get the five demands they're looking for? Not at all. No, they're in there they're to serve a, for a crime. And I think they should just, the government just keep them as they are, give them nothing. You don't think the British government should make any concessions no. at all? But if they give them these, they'll want something else. Excuse me, sir, can I ask you how you feel about Bobby Sands' death? Delighted. Oh, delighted. And why are you delighted? I don't have my elaborate on it. I don't feel anything, it's just as well he's away. And why do you think that? Well, sure, it was his own fault. Nobody wanted me there, he wanted their cell. Do you think the hunger strikers should uh, get the five demands which they're looking for? I don't, it all depends on themselves what to do. I don't care about it. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> how, how do you feel? Why are you not worried about him? Just, just him. <laughs> well, of course, I, I'm and But Paddy Devlin five, believes the five demands are reasonable. Quite reasonable. Uh, uh, when I was in jail around 1942-1945, we had the right to wear our own clothing and we wore them. We also prepared our own food and kept the place clean, you know, to suit our own comfort. And I don't think that there was any reason why the, the British should have been so rigid and that they shouldn't have advanced or extended the five concessions that were, that were sought for. In other countries, especially democratic countries in Western Europe and even in some of the states in America, you'll find that those reforms and more are extended to people in prison. So do you think effectively the five demands could have been conceded without conceding a political status? Yes, I, I'm quite certain that those five concessions could have been considered quite easily. A political status didn't come into it. A political status has yet to be defined. That, that's a difficult one for most people because uh, it's difficult for people like myself to to uh, defend or support the idea of political status while lives have still been lost, while lives have still been taken. As, uh, and clearly, I think that to, to reduce it or to confine it purely to those concessions that they sought would have been quite reasonable and the lad's life wouldn't have been lost. So what's the way forward from here, Paddy Devlin, in resolving this issue as you see it? Yeah, well, I hope that the, some effort is made within the regime uh, to... Uh, at least reinterpret the, the, the five concessions that were given in the first instance. And I don't know that it's a matter for total confrontation in the way that it's turned out. I reckon that even within the present administration it's possible to find a formula or to find the flexibility that would enable the, 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 the prisoners to get the, con the concessions they're looking for. And what happens to this community if neither side gives? Well, you can see what's happening. This is just merely prison reform and yet we have a total collision uh, between two sections of the community purely based on the Yahoo element that exists in both sections of the community. It gives them their freedom to do what they want. It gives them the, the, the opportunity to create hysteria. And the first thing you know that both sides are lining up numbers of people to defend one another and yet there's no, there's no way that anybody's going to attack one another and I've said that repeatedly in public. But yet the hysteria created by the Yahoo element has led to the point where there's almost, we're on the verge of total war. If another hunger striker dies? Oh, that's possible. It gets worse all the time.